In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the inline opt-in form in Bloom. Now what the inline opt-in form is, is an opt-in form, uh, much like our other opt-in forms, except this specific opt-in form is uh, it generates a short code that you can use to place the opt-in form anywhere on your website, as long as it's um, pasted within the WordPress post editor. So this means you have uh, complete control over where this individual opt-in form is placed, you can just um, edit a post or page, paste in that short code right into the post editor, and that's where your opt-in form will appear. And so here's an example. I have a post, and right in the middle of the post, I've pasted this uh, newsletter opt-in form. That's just one example, but you could add it to your page. Maybe you have a specific page, and now you've, you've generated this uh, you know, certain landing page, and you'd like to place the, the opt-in form at a specific point, You know, maybe in the middle, and at the end of that um, landing page. So with the short code, you can do that because you have full control over where you paste that short code and the inline opt-in form. So to get started in creating your form, you're going to go to the WordPress dashboard and look for the Bloom tab here, and then click on the opt-in forms link. And this will bring, your t bring you to the active and inactive uh, opt-in forms that you've created as well as a button for creating uh, a new opt-in form. And you can see here's the inline opt-in form that I just showed you. Um, but I'm going to delete this and start over so that you can see exactly how that opt-in form was created. Now, it's important to note that before you can add a functioning opt-in form to Bloom, you first have to um, add an email marketing account. And what that is is a um, email newsletter systems such as MailChimp or Aweber or Constant Contact, whatever system you're using to manage your subscribers and send those email newsletters. So you can think of Bloom as the bridge between these email marketing systems and your website. So when someone signs up on your website and signs up using a Bloom, Bloom opt-in form, well, Bloom needs to know where that person should be subscribed to, and so you're going to sync your list, right? You're gonna you're gonna sign into Mailchimp, copy your API key, and then use that to authorize your account within the Bloom account management tab. So we have a whole uh, tutorial that goes over how to add each account, um, and it goes over all 12 of the different account types that Bloom currently supports, and it will go over all um, account types we add in the future. And so the you can see the account tab here. So before you create an opt-in uh, form, you first have to add an account. You're going to go over here to the Accounts tab, click the New Account button. And as you can see, here's all the accounts I've, I've already added. So whenever I create an opt-in form, I'm going to be able to select from each of these account types and each of the lists I have within these account types. So back to the opt-in management tab. To get started, I'm going to click the New Opt-in button, and then I'm going to select the inline opt-in type. Now, there's two steps to the process. The first is the basic setup. And here you're going to give your opt-in form a name. This is just something to remember it by. I'm going to call it inline. And then uh, you're going to sec select your account and the list um, associated with the, that account that you would like the subscribers to be added to. So that's what I was just talking about a moment ago. And if you once you've added an account, for example, I have an Aweber account added here. And if I select Aweber from the form integration list, I'm going to get the account that I added here, and then I'm going to get all the lists associated with that account, and I'm going to select the list that I want these subscribers to be added to. So once you've added an account, selected an account, and selected a list, you can move on to the next step, which is the design tab. And whenever you create a new opt-in form, and you move on to the design tab, you're first going to be gr greeted with a list of pre-made templates and you can think of these as starting points. Um, and what they are are basically um, a collection of design settings, um, a, a collection of uh, Bloom's design settings. And we've gone through and done all the hard work and created a, a bunch of um, different combinations that we think look really good. And then these, are, uh, these were then created into these pre-made templates. And you can use uh, some of these, just right, or most of these, right off the bat. They're going to look great. Um, we've designed them to look great. But that being said, whenever you select a pre-made template, you have full control over everything. So you can customize everything. So I just encourage you to select 
uh, a template that, that looks best to you, and then worry about customization next. So I'm going to select this template here, and then I'm going to go down and click Customize, and this is going to bring me to all the different design settings. And like I said, this pre-made template is really just a collection of, of these design settings that we've uh, kind of consolidated into a single template for you. Now, it's worth noting that Bloom comes with a lot of design options, and so we've actually created a, a whole separate tutorial that, that deals with, the, with all the design options and goes into depth about each design option. So I encourage you to go listen to that tutorial if you want uh, to learn more. And so in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to speed the through these design options a little bit more quickly. And um, if anything is confusing to you, be sure to go check out that other tutorial. So at any point during the, during, during the design process, you can click, click this preview button and, and get a glimpse at what the option form you're designing looks like. As you can see, this looks just like the pre-made template we selected. We haven't changed anything yet, but as we change things, we can click that preview button and uh, take a look at what we've changed. So the first thing we can adjust is the opt-in title and the opt-in message. This is the text that appears. So right now, right now it says subscribe to our newsletter, but you can add more to this or, or change it. You might say subscribe to our blog or something along those lines if this, is, this happens to be like an RSS to email uh, list that you're creating and so on. And you can adjust the message as well that appears below the header. And um, next up, you can adjust the image settings. So you can upload your own image. You can choose not to have an image. If you don't want to use an image, that's fine. And uh, if you do choose to have an image, you can also select the image orientation, which affects where the image appears within the opt-in box. So right now, the image orientation is set to left of text. But you could put it to, to put it to the right of the text or put it above or below the text as well. So. As an example, if I chose to put this above the text, then uh, we can click that preview icon to see what it looks like. Then that uh, image gets placed in the center here above the text. And you can also put left or right. I'm going to put it to right. And like I said, you could also upload your own image. We've uh, created a bunch of uh, beautiful images for you to use in these pre-made templates, but you know they're just um, examples. They're not set in stone, so you can upload your own image. In fact, we encourage you to do so and uh, select whatever image you want there. Next up is the load-in animation, and this affects um, the am animation that applies to the image itself when it first appears on the website. It kind of loads in with this nice animation. It might catch your visitor's eyes, and, and by default, it just kind of fades in and slides up, but we have a bunch of nice animations here that you can choose from, such as a flip animation, which I like, and so you can see it kind of flips in. So just choose an animation that, that appeals to you. Next up is the hide on mobile option, and what this does is hides the image when the form is viewed on a mobile device. And the reason this is useful is because as you add more and more text to your opt-in form, let's say you have a very long header and a substantial message below that header as well, well the more stuff you add to the form, um, the bigger the form becomes, especially on mobile as the width of the form is decreased and the height is therefore increased as, that, I as that, that content is squished in. And if it gets too long, it can get really big and kind of awkward on, on a phone, right? You have to, it's not ideal to kind of have to scroll through to read the whole opt-in form and get to the subscribe button. It's better if maybe that whole form is able to fit into the, into the kind of average screen size of a phone. And so if you have a long message, you might choose to hide the image and it will give more room uh, in the opt-in box. Next up, we have the opt-in styling options, and here you can adjust various things that apply to the opt-in box as a whole, such as the background color, as well as the uh, font for the header and the, and the message. And we have a, a ton of different uh, fonts you can choose from here, and you can adjust the text color as well. And the reason the, the text color option is important, you can choose between either light or dark, and you wanna make this decision based on the background color you're using. So because we have this dark kind of rust color background. We want to choose a light color text so that text shows up well, but if, for example, we chose a white background color, well, that light text isn't going to show up very well. In fact, it's not going to show up at all. And so in that case, we'd probably want to use dark text instead, and it shows up a lot better. And if we switch back to our orange, um, we want to switch our text color back to light. Next up is the corner style. 
You can choose between rounded and squared corners. So rounded corners, as you might think, uh, add round corners to all four edges, all four corners of the often box. So just if you, if you whatever style you know kind of works with your website, it's really up to you. Next up is the border orientation. And um, this allows you to apply a border to any of the four uh, sides of your opt-in box. So, and once you select uh, or choose to have a border, you're going to get some more border options, such as the border color. We could add kind of a dark gray border color. And then you can also cho choose the border style. So right now we just have this standard solid border. And if we take a look at that, like I said, it's going to be a normal solid line around the border or around the border of the box. But there's also some other options here. We have the dashed border, the double border, an inline uh, inlaid border, and this um, kind of fun stripe uh, male letterhead style border that you might have uh, seen around the web. It's kind of a classic look and it looks nice here. And so you might choose to have that applied if you want to you know, make something a little bit more fun. And if you think that maybe you know having this on all four sides is a little overpowering, maybe it's just like a little too crazy, you could choose to perhaps only have it on the top, which might look nice. So you see that having just like this little accent on the top it looks looks cool. So I'm just gonna choose to have my border only on the top edge. Next is the form setup, and here you choose where the form appears within the box. So right now we're, we have the form on the bottom, but we could have it placed on the right or left as well. So if I change the form orientation to right, you're going to see that this, uh, you know, the input fields and the buttons get placed on the right here instead of on the bottom. And the result is a much uh, s uh, shorter opt-in box. So this could be nice if you're trying to you know, make something that fits a little bit more nicely into a post. And you can also choose to collect people's names in addition to, to email. So by default, we just collect the email address. But if you want to collect their names as well, you can say uh, display name field. And then you can also adjust the placeholder text within the input fields, as well as the button text that appears. Um, so you could change it from subscribe to maybe join today or whatever you like. And then you can adjust the button text color. And much like the um, text color option we previewed earlier, you want to change this between light and dark depending on your button background color. So if you have a dark dark button background color, as we do now, you're going to want to go with that light text color. Next up is the form styling. And so this adjusts um, the actual form fields within the form. So um, the form fields being, you know, this button and then this email input form here. So you can choose to have the form fields uh, either inline or stacked. So let's say we have the form on the bottom here. And we have, you can see these, these, these in the input field and the join button are being displayed in a single row. That's what we call inline form fields. But if you'd want to put them perhaps on stacked on top of each other, you could do that as well. So we choose stacked, it's gonna put those on top of each other. And it's just a different look, and um, like I said, you can kind of play with this depending on how tall you want your form to be. If you want it to be a little bit more substantial, you might want to have them stacked. If you want it to be a little bit thinner and less substantial, you might want to have them displayed in line as we had before. Next, we have rounded corners. You can apply rounded corners to the input fields or have them squared. So if you have squared corners, it's just going to change the, you know, the corners of these input fields. Um, and then the background color you can change as well as the button color. So we have this orange and the dark gray button color, but you're, you're free to change those. And finally, we have our edge style. And th this affects the edge between the form and the rest of the content within the box. So right now it's just kind of a standard straight edge. But if we want to get a little bit more crazy, we could try the zigzag edge, which is fun. Or if you want to go a little bit more minimal, we could do this uh, little carrot arrow edge, which is nice. So just choose whatever you're thinking would work nicely with your website. And then the last couple settings here are the form footer text, which is you allows you to input text below the field. And here you can link out to your privacy policy or, or input any kind of like message that might reassure your visitors that you won't be sharing their information or anything you, you want to put there about your list that they're about to subscribe to. You can put it there in the footer text. Next is the success message text. This allows you to adjust the message that appears when someone successfully subscribes to your list. 
And finally, we have the custom CSS option. Here you can add custom code for this particular opt-in. And when you do so, that custom CSS is going to appear on the same page as the opt-in box whenever it appears. So if you're CSS savvy, you can use those skills to um, customize the box even further if these design options weren't enough for you. So that concludes the creation process of the opt-in form. You'll notice at the bottom of the design settings, we have this button here, generate shortcode. And what this, is, what this is going to do is generate a shortcode for you that you can copy and paste into any post or page on your website to display this opt-in form you just created. So um, that's what makes this inline form unique is that it, it actually generates a shortcode you can use. And if you click this button, you're gonna get a little pop-up and you're gonna see that this is the shortcode you need to use. So just copy and paste this um, into any post, uh, any post or page and it's gonna display the form. So after you've copied and pasted that, click save and exit. Make sure you save and exit or else your form won't be created. And um, if at any time you want to, you forget your, your short code and you, you, want, you, you need to be reminded of what that short code is, you can come back to this active options tab and click the short code icon here. And that's gonna give you that same pop-up which reminds you this is the short code you need to display that particular pop-up. So you can again, copy that and then paste it into the WordPress post editor, wherever you like. And so if we go back to our posts here and we want to put this inline opt-in form into one of our posts, well then all you got to do is paste that short code that we just copied and you're done. Wherever you paste it is where it's going to appear. So I've pasted it a few paragraphs down in this post. And if we view the post and scroll, you're going to see that it uh, appears here right where I pasted it. Like I said, you have full control over where you put, wherever you put that inline um, opt-in form short code. You can put it in a post or a page or any post type anywhere where you're working with that WordPress post editor. Now, one more thing before we conclude the, the tutorial, and that's about um, accessing your short codes. We've added um, a Bloom short code button here, which makes it really easy to access all the um, short codes that you've currently created. So whenever you create a new inline opt-in form, it's going to generate a shortcode, and that shortcode is going to be easily accessible here. So if you go over to our inline opt-in uh, drop-down menu here, you're going to see this inline opt-in um, shortcode that we just created. And, and so if we have forgotten what that shortcode is, well, luckily, they're always accessible here. And you can just click on whatever um, opt-in form you want to add to the post, and it's going to add the shortcode there for you. Yep, so that's a basic overview of using the inline shortcode as well as how to create and design your inline, inline opt-in form.